So there's only three weeks left till Rise of Iron releases and that got me thinking, are there any hidden gems among the vendor weapons that I haven't yet picked up? And as it turns out, there are quite a few really solid vendor weapons that are so much better than you might think and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So welcome to the top 10 vendor weapons you need to buy before Rise of Iron. I've ranked the weapons on a mix between their current performance and their perk set. Some of the weapons on this list aren't going to perform that great if you took it into the Crucible right now, but they have amazing perks and with future weapon balancing changes, they could turn out to be fantastic weapons. I do want to apologize for not getting this video out sooner, as you guys won't have a ton of time to get these weapons at this point, but I hope the video will be helpful to you regardless. So let's jump right into it. At the number 10 spot is the Paleo Contact Auto Rifle from Dead Orbit. This definitely is not the most effective weapon on the list, but it has a very high fun factor. It comes with Hipfire, Perfect Balance and Icarus. This allows you to jump around and hipfire the weapon and still be highly accurate. A lot of people don't rate Icarus and Hipfire very highly, but in my opinion they're both excellent perks, especially for auto rifles. Perfect Balance obviously helps with the stability too, making this weapon's recoil quite manageable. I would hardly say that this is a god roll, but it's definitely worth picking up for the fun factor alone. Moving on to number 9, we have the Hitchhiker FR4 Fusion Rifle, also from Dead Orbit. This is a max impact fusion rifle, meaning that you only need to land 4 out of the 5 beams to get a kill. This of course comes at the cost of a very slow charge time that definitely takes some getting used to. The vendor perks on this weapon are Hidden Hand, Brace Frame and Hot Swap. Hot Swap is arguably the best perk for a fusion rifle as it tightens the spread quite significantly, making it easier to land 1 vs kills with it. And it definitely feels like this weapon needs it, as it does have quite a bit of kick to it. Of course that's something Brace Frame also helps out with boosting the stability of the weapon quite significantly. And lastly, Hidden Hand is a fairly solid perk for fusion rifles as the extra aim assist will make the projectiles curve slightly, again making it easier to land all of your projectiles. I'm not gonna lie though, this weapon takes some getting used to. In spite of it being one of the only fusion rifles that can kill with 4 projectiles, it does kick a lot and the charge time is abysmal. Once you get used to it though, this weapon is fantastic, but for these reasons it doesn't make it higher on the list. Oh my god, mapped. In the number 8 spot we have a weapon that really only shines in PvE and that is the next big thing. This is a mid impact shotgun similar to the Comedian and it comes with full auto and crowd control allowing this weapon to absolutely melt major enemies. It doesn't have a range boosting perk but honestly that isn't really needed in PvE and regardless this archetype of shotgun doesn't shine in PvP, it's simply outclassed by party crashers, conspiracy theories, matadors, all that business. But with a combination of full auto which increases the fire rate quite significantly and crowd control which gives you a damage boost after a kill, this weapon becomes a DPS monster in PvE. In the number 7 spot is the Jabberhake sidearm from the Vanguard Quartermaster. This one comes with crowd control, battle runner and speed reload. Now I will say there's not a massive difference between the sidearms and if you are going to buy a sidearm from one of the vendors, you can't really go wrong. Both the Mnemonic Conviction sidearm that comes with Rangefinder and the Crucible vendors Havoc Pigeon that has Reactive Reload are fine choices. What gives the Jabberhake the edge in my opinion is that it has the most well-rounded role. We've already talked about crowd control and on sidearms this allows you to completely melt opposing guardians. And Battle Runner is very underrated in my opinion. I personally really like the boosted agility following a kill and it has helped me escape situations I otherwise wouldn't have gotten out on on multiple occasions. The final column is a bit lackluster, but Crowd Control and Battle Runner are both excellent perks that in my opinion gives this sidearm the edge over the other vendor sidearms. At number 6 is a weapon I originally intended for the number 10 spot and solely because of the perk set. But I actually fell in love with this gun as I played with it, and that is the Deal Breaker. This is a high impact auto rifle obtained from the Crucible Quartermaster, and it comes with an absolute god roll of Crowd Control, Counterbalance and Braced Frame. Unfortunately, this archetype of auto rifle isn't exactly in a good spot right now, but this perk combination actually made it a lot of fun to use and surprisingly effective. If I'm not mistaken, Hake auto rifles are the only auto rifles that can roll with crowd control. And Brace Frame of course takes the magazine size down from 26 to just 20, meaning under normal circumstances you can't really take out two players with one magazine. But crowd control actually allows you to do this by boosting the weapon's damage up from 25 on crit shots to 29 on crit shots. This does take the shots to kill down by 1 and it actually makes a surprisingly big deal. You do need to be very accurate with the weapon though, but the combination of Brace Frame and Counterbalance makes this very easy. Don't get me wrong though, this weapon does not have a fantastic time to kill. 
against a good pulse rifle or hand cannon player, you are always going to be at a disadvantage with this weapon. But if auto rifles were to get buffed in the future, this weapon could quite honestly be one of the very best in the game. Moving on to number 5 is the Vanity Hand Cannon from Future World Cult. This is of the same archetype as the IS Luna in a Mago loop dealing 57 damage to the body and 86 to the head. In other words, you need one headshot and two body shots to take out a Guardian. This gun comes with third eye, rifle barrel and life support. Rifle barrel is the most important perk here as it gives you a significant boost to range and as we all know by now, the more range on a hand cannon the better. This is even more important for Omelon hand cannons as their base range is quite low. It also comes with third eye which is a great PvP perk allowing you to keep the radar while aiming. This is especially useful in Rumble and 66 where you will get flanked a lot. It also has life support which is a perk that doesn't get a lot of love but it's honestly one of my favorite perks. It will occasionally restore your health on kill if your health is low and it's a lifesaver. I honestly don't think it procs as much as it should but when it does it is extremely valuable. This is an overall solid hand cannon for PvP, with the only real downside being that the low base range makes it difficult to compete with Godworld, Eyes, Luminous, and Lord High Fixed. But regardless, it is a lot of fun and it is a fairly effective hand cannon, and easily the best one from the vendors. At number 4 we actually have two weapons that are almost identical. These are the Ruin Wake Machine Gun from the Crucible Quartermaster and the Objection Fall from New Monarchy. They share the same archetype being the second highest impact machine guns available. They both come with rangefinder and counterbalance, both of which are excellent machine gun perks, and both of them do void damage. The only real difference between the two is the middle column, where the Brunewick has high caliber rounds, brace frame and armor piercing rounds, whereas the Objection has high caliber rounds, oil frame and small bulk. So it really comes down to personal preference. In my opinion the Objection is better as it comes to small bulk, giving you a slight range advantage over the Runewick. Runewake does come with brace frame, but with the combination of a slow fire rate and counterbalance, high stability isn't really all that important. And should you prefer high caliber rounds, well they both have that, so it really comes down to whether you have a new monarchy allegiance or not. Either way, these weapons were simply too similar to exclude one of them from the list. Which one is better comes down to personal preference. At number 3 is the Righteous 7, the new monarchy auto rifle. This gun is based off a Suros frame and is in the mid impact archetype of auto rifle. It comes with an absolutely fantastic roll with counterbalance, perfect balance and the choice between lightweight and reinforced barrel. Counterbalance of course needs no introduction, it has been established as one of the best if not the very best perk for auto rifles and pulse rifles. Additionally you have perfect balance to boost the stability pretty significantly and you also have the choice between reinforced barrel and lightweight. Essentially a choice between range and stability, as reinforced barrel will actually take away stability but give you a lot of range. Perfect balance can completely negate the stability loss from reinforced barrel, but regardless which perk you choose between the two really comes down to whether you want more range or more stability. I played around with both and I honestly didn't find a massive difference, although I did have a slight preference for reinforced barrel. I just find the extra range to be a little more valuable. And with counterbalance, this weapon is incredibly easy to control regardless, and it's a ton of fun. It's a surprisingly effective auto rifle that I definitely recommend you pick up. In at number 2 is the Vacancy Fusion Rifle from Future War Cult. This is a high impact fusion, though unlike the Hitchhiker you do need to land all 5 projectiles to land a 1 hit kill. This weapon also comes with Hot Swap, which as we already established, is arguably the best perk for a fusion rifle. It also has rangefinder and brace frame to give you a pretty significant boost to range and stability. Both of those stats are of course extremely important on a fusion rifle and compared to the hitchhiker we can see exactly why the vacancy has the edge. It doesn't only have max stability but with rangefinder the range is actually greater than the hitchhikers. That said though this weapon does still suffer from some of the same inconsistency problems as all other fusion rifles. Sometimes you can absolutely map people and sometimes they'll barely do any damage at point blank. But it's really hard to find a better fusion rifle than this one. You should absolutely pick this one up before Rise of Iron. Now before we actually get to the number one spot, I do have a few honorable mentions. This first one is the Burden of Proof Shotgun from New Monkey. While this weapon definitely comes with a god roll, with rangefinder, rifle barrel and final round, the downfall of this weapon is the low impact. In PvP it can't even come close to an average potty crasher, and in PvE it's outclassed by the next big thing. Next honorable mention is the Villainy Pulse Rifle. While the vendor version does have a solid roll, it doesn't qualify as a god roll, and most of us already have at least one god roll near Rune's Mercy, which is of the same archetype. The villain cannot compete with that. And lastly, the Antinomy Sniper from New Monarchy. This sniper is almost identical to the Haketama D and Ifa Rua D snipers. While the Antinomy does have quick draw, the other perks are extremely mediocre, and you can easily get a better roll on one of the previously mentioned hockey snipers 
by picking one up from the gunsmith next time he sells one. But that brings us to the number one spot, which of course is the Hawksaw. I'm gonna assume that 99% of you already have bought this weapon, and if you haven't, you are either living under a rock or you have an even better counterbalance rule somehow. This weapon needs no introduction, it has been one of the most popular weapons throughout year 2, it comes with counterbalance, arguably the best pulse rifle perk, as well as fit stock and small bow for extra range and stability. This weapon is incredibly stable, easy to control and has solid range. There's nothing not to like about this gun. Those who have been following the channel for a while know that I love the PDX-45 pulse rifle, and the Hawksaw is almost identical to the PDX. And I did actually review the PDX-45 with the exact same role as this Hawksaw earlier this year, so if you want a full review of this weapon, more or less, uh, I will leave a link to the PDX review in the description. Everything I said in that video does apply to the Hawksaw, except of course for some comparisons to the Hawksaw. I will say keep in mind that the review is old, at this point I actually slightly prefer the Hawksaw to the PDX because of the slight extra range. But yeah, I assume it's completely pointless to actually include this weapon on the list because all of you should already have this weapon. There's absolutely no doubt, one of the best pulse rifles in the game, definitely the best one from the vendors. Anyway, those are my picks for the top 10 vendor weapons you need to buy before Rise of Iron. Do let me know in the comment section if you think I missed any hidden gems. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and I will catch you guys next time.